Okay, here we have a fairly standard sort of problem for a first year calculus class, and that is to use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x given some specific function. In this case, we are given a rational function. Okay, so as a first step, let's remind ourselves what is the definition of the derivative. Well, hopefully, you recall that the derivative is defined to be a limit as h goes to 0 of this expression right here, f of x plus h minus f of x, all of that over h. And of course, uh, this definition is only valid if this limit actually exists. But that gives us our first step. Okay, that gives us a, a place to go. All right, so let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, so we have this here. Now, we need to evaluate this limit. And maybe as a first instinct uh, in evaluating limits, you want to simply try to plug it in, plug in 0 here for h, more precisely. But understand that when we're dealing with derivatives, when we're dealing with this particular limit, we'll never be able to do that. If we plug in h equals 0, regardless of what f is, the numerator turns into f of x, right? f of x plus 0, that's f of x, minus f of x, that's 0 on the top. And if, again, we're plugging in 0 for h, we have 0 on the bottom. That's 0 over 0. That doesn't help us much. Okay? So we're going to have to do something else. Well, let's take into account what f actually does. We're given a formula for f. This right here could be replaced with this, right? It's the same thing, f of x. And this right here we could come up with an expression for as well. Uh, this is just f with an input of x plus h. So I plug in x plus h in for every occurrence of x in the definition of f of x, so right here. And notice that gives us this right here. 2 over 3 times uh, 3 minus 5 times the quantity x plus h. Make sure you put those parentheses in. They are important. Now I can take this expression and use it to replace this. I can take this expression and use it to replace this. And that's going to give me this. Okay, you can see the two pieces right here and here. Now, we still have to evaluate this thing. Uh, this may bother you a little bit. It's something that uh, you should have just a, a strong urge to try to clean up, to simplify. Um, this 5 times x and 5 times h, there we could distribute that through. Let's go ahead and do that. But now what? Okay, again, we still can't plug in h equals 0 because of this h in the denominator, and we also end up getting a 0 on the top. What we would like to do is ultimately to cancel some common factor in the numerator and the denominator, presumably the factor that's going to zero when h goes to zero, in other words, in this case, the h. But the top is just not looking nice, is it? We have fractions inside of a larger fraction. It's hard to imagine what this thing would look like in factored form. We need to clean this up first. Okay? To that end, consider the following. And this is a, a standard trick that can be pulled to eliminate fractions inside of fractions. Look at the denominators you have here and here. If you multiply the entire numerator by those same two factors, when you distribute this across these two terms, those will get canceled out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to insert this, this, uh, these additional factors. But I have to compensate for that insertion. I can't just go around willy-nilly multiplying numerators of, of an expression by something and expect the expression not to change. So I'm going to put the exact same factors down below. So what I'm really doing is multiplying by a well-chosen value of 1, which will not change this expression, only its form to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, so if as I distribute these two across these two terms, notice some things cancel off. 
by design. And the first one, the 3 minus 5x minus 5h cancels. And you're left with a 2 and a 3 minus 5x. There they are. And the second, the 3 minus 5x cancels. And you're left with a 2 and a 3 minus 5x minus 5h. There they are. Okay, and in the bottom, we just jam everything together. Now it's important. Don't multiply these things together in the denominator. Remember the goal here. The goal is to get this factor of h to drop off, to cancel with hopefully some h in the numerator. If I multiply it together with these guys, I'm just going to have to refactor it back out to do the cancellation. So don't multiply these things in the denominator together. That said, looking at the numerator, there are some things we can do here, right? We can clean this up. We can tighten it, simplify it. We could distribute the 2's across both quantities, hoping that maybe then later uh, we could collect terms and maybe some of them would cancel off. So let's go ahead and do that. Distribute the 2's. And notice now we get uh, 2 times 3 or 6, and 2 times negative 5 or negative 10x there. There's another 6, there's another 10x, and finally there's a positive 10h. And just looking at these things, it's pretty clear 6 is going to cancel with this negative 6. A negative 10x and a positive 10x are going to cancel, and that leaves only the 10h up top. And notice what we have here. We finally located our factor of h, which we may now cancel off without affecting the value of the limit. So this troublesome h, this thing that was turning the denominator into 0 when I plugged h equals 0 into this expression, is now gone. Is there any trouble plugging in 0 now to evaluate the limit? Well, no. If I plug in h equals 0, this term simply goes away, leaving a 3 minus 5x times another 3 minus 5x. Which means that is the value of the limit. And hence this is the derivative f prime of x. We're done. Hope that helped.